A is for Amsterdam. A man needed to exercise the bad memories he had of certain European cities. He deliberately returned to London, Paris, Strasbourg, Salzburg, and Stockholm to put things right. He did not have to return to Amsterdam. He only had good memories of Amsterdam. It was there that he'd fallen in love. B is for birds. A man liked birds because they can both sing and fly, and they are the last of the dinosaurs. He certainly wished he could fly, and certainly wished he could sing. And to be the last of anything is always a privilege. C is for children. A man had four children and was very proud that he could pass on his genetic inheritance four times. If all his four children had the same number of children as he, in four generations, which is 100 years, he could have a quarter of a million progeny. D is for death. An aging man's next big adventure was death. However, death kept running ahead, and the man really glimpsed him, making the man think the race would certainly go on for some time yet, and if death was deliberately not showing himself so much, it would not be such a big adventure after all. D is for drawing. A man had five black objects he enjoyed. A black bicycle for traveling, a black hat for protecting his head and imagination, a black coat for protecting his body, black underwear to remind him of his sexuality, and the fifth, a black pen filled with black ink with which he used to constantly draw the other four to make himself perfectly happy. E is for elegance. A man concentrated all his sense of elegance on a single dark blue suit with white stripes, which he wore all the time. Some said he looked like a convict, some a Chicago gangster. Some indeed said he looked like a bankster, which could be a combination of the two. But he could never be a bankster because he had so little money and would never ever employ violence to get any. F is for films. A man was asked how was it that he had begun his career as a painter and was now a filmmaker, to which he replied that he was disappointed that paintings did not have soundtracks. G is for Greenaway and Greenaway. A man had an idea that his name was ancient, which pleased him. It meant his ancestors had already been around for some time, and with his four present children and his many future grandchildren, it could be around for some time to come. H is for household gods. A man did not believe in a god, or indeed in any gods, and to remind him, he made a collection of gods for his mantelpiece. They stood there day after day doing nothing at all, which proved they could indeed be decorative, even beautiful, but were absolutely without purpose or function and entirely unnecessary. I is for insects. A man as a boy collected insects because they were numerous, fascinating, beautiful, and were so essential in the world to make it work. But as a man, he began to think he was big game hunting on a small scale, and he gave up. It was a good ecological gesture, 
though of course the numerous, fascinating, beautiful, and essential insects never noticed. J is for justice. A man was convinced that civilization worked, because otherwise, how could he be talking to you? Yet he was painfully aware that justice was painfully unavailable for a great many people in the world, and especially painfully unavailable for women. Am I talking to a woman? K is for knowledge. A man knew that sparrows are disappearing from Western Europe. Sparrows are mentioned in the Bible to suggest that despite their ancient ubiquity and familiarity and drab humility, God intimately knew every single one of them. If they are now disappearing, what does that mean? That God has a reduced vigilance? That they are no longer required to demonstrate God's all-knowingness? That they are seeking to make themselves more valuable by increasing their rarity? That they are unhappy with their humble ubiquity in God's eye and want to bring about a change in how both we and God perceive them? L is for love. A man yearned for the love of a good woman, but was a little frightened of dying boredom. M is for memory. To fall asleep, a man lay still in a darkened room and waited for the memory of a remembered experience to drift into his consciousness. It always did. It never failed. Sitting on a train with a monkey, eating raspberries in his grandfather's garden, walking in a rainstorm on a beach, being sick in Dortmund, stroking a goat on a dike, kissing a plump young woman in an elevator, driving beside the Katachurian Lake in winter, fearfully operating a chainsaw, eating vinegar-saturated anchovies in Herculaneum till his lips bled, urinating in a wax envelope in a concert hall whilst the orchestra played the second movement of Prokofiev's classical symphony, and of course, laying still in a darkened room, waiting for a memory of an experience to drift into consciousness. N is for nightmares. A man persistently had two dreams. A positive dream of a secret room at the top of his house where he could retire and be secure and happy, and a negative dream of total body paralysis in the depths of his cellar where he shivered in fear. His greatest apprehension was that the two dreams one day would swap places. O is for origins. A man deliberated with some sense of desperation on the problems of evolution because he was sure his life, if nobody else's, had more meaning than to be a sloppy way of passing on genetic material. P is for painting. A man knew that painting, without doubt, was the most satisfactory thing you could do every day. He decided this when he was 14. He was now 74, and he still felt the same. It's wise to plan ahead. Q is for questions. A man never stopped asking questions and really seldom waited for the answers. Was it because he knew that the answers would never satisfy him? 
or would be wrong or simply tedious. He knew that most people were aware that you should seldom let the truth get in the way of a good story. He would always rather have the good story. R is for reading. A man read deep into the night. They had to dig him out, but they were not in time. He was dead, suffocated by words. It was not at all a bad way to die. S is for stars. A man was worried that counting stars would fill him with despair. This is not because there are so very many, but if you want to do it accurately, you have to do it alone and at night. T is for time. A man distrusted his watch. It cheated him all the time. When he was miserable, it stretched out time unendurably. When he was happy, it raced. His watch could not be trusted. If a watch could not be trusted to measure time honestly, was that because it was a characteristic of time itself? U is for uniform. A man knew that if you really wanted to belong to the world, you had to wear a uniform of some sort. His problem was, what sort of uniform? Should he wear a berry, a striped t-shirt, and carry a long loaf of bread and pretend to be a painter? Or wear a medallion on a hairy chest and carry a film can and pretend to be a film director? His wife, to make his life simple, told him simply to wear no clothes at all. And then he could belong to the biggest community in the world, the community of the naked. V is for the VUE. A young man invented a company he called the Violent Unknown Event, the VUE for short. He could have explained how he felt about life. He was pretty certain that everything would end up badly and he would never know why. You could, of course, spell V-U-E, the view, V-I-E-W, and that could embrace everything in sight and it sort of sounded much more positive. The man was still alive last week and is still waiting for the outcome. W is for water. A man who couldn't swim hopefully believed that if you inadvertently fell into the sea, you could rely on a primitive air bladder in your lungs in remembrance of the time when you were a fish. He was a fantasist and it was a long time since he'd been a fish. He resolved not to go near the sea on Fridays. People were allowed to eat fish on Fridays. X is for exit. A man was waiting for an exit. He was a filmmaker and spent a great deal of his working life in the dark. The exit sign showed a way to come out of the dark. Trouble was, most people watch cinema at night, and the exit sign only demonstrated how to come out of one sort of darkness into another. Why is for yesterday. Yesterday is already history, and a man believed that there was no such thing as history. There can only be historians to tell you about it. Where was he going to find a historian to tell you about his yesterday. Zed is for Zoe. 
A man had a daughter called Zoe, which means life in Greek. She was a sort of life raft. She would certainly go on, even if he would not. If Zoe had been a son, he might have called him by the only other Greek name he knew, which also incidentally began with the last letter of the alphabet, Zorba. Zorba in Greek means live every day, which is just as good. The man obviously could not fail to live forever through his children. And take no notice of Z being the last letter of the alphabet. It's obviously just an opportunity to start all over again.